Hello and welcome to this week's Used Car Heaven. This is the programme that gives you the chance, if you're looking to change your car at the moment, to come and join us for a day and get to drive a few cars. Also on this week's programme, Simon Hughes, the car doctor, will be back in the surgery and Brad will have more insider tips at the trading post. But before all of that, we need to see who's joining us on this week's programme. And it's Michelle Fothergill from Old Windsor who works in market research. Michelle is the mother of two children, Morgan Seven and Grace, who's four, and currently drives an f edge Honda Accord. But she's decided to splash out on a new car and has around £10,000 to spend. Now, Michelle's got an open mind about what she's looking for, so what cars have we set up for her? Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Hello there. How are you? All right? Yeah, very well, thank you. So, at the moment, you've got a Honda Accord. That's right, a Honda Accord Aerodeck. Why do you want to change that? Because it's old, I love it dearly. It's it's really reliable, but it's on its it's about an F range and it? it's on time, its last time legs. Time for a change. Yes. So, what sort of money are you looking to spend on your new car? Uh, about ten thousand. About ten thousand. Well, the three that we've got lined up today, around about the ten thousand. One uh -huh. or two a little bit more, one or two under. The first is this, the Renault Megane Coupe. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the cheapest. It's nine thousand um, pounds. What do you think of it? Um, well, first impressions, it looks lovely. You know, really fun and obviously stands out, which is what I'm looking for. Something a little bit, you know, fun and you a little bit different. A bit sporty as well, maybe? Uh, definitely, yeah. Because yeah. you get that with the, with the Megane Coupe over the sort of standard Megans, which some of them look, don't, That's don't right. look fantastic. Not, well, quite, this... not quite sure about the colour yet. That's... Mm, bright, sort of mustardy. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, I know what you mean. But good value for money, nine yep. grand yep. No, for um, a nearly first, new car. First impressions, um, I like it. I what like about it space inside a car? Is that important to you? Definitely. That's the only drawback with this one. Obviously, I've got two young children. I mean, they're quite young at the moment, but obviously yeah. they're going to get bigger. So, um, you know, boot space and uh, room at the back and possibly three having... Three-door is not ideal, though, is it, I suppose, for getting um, out of the back, or is that a problem? It's not, it's not a major You're issue, three-door. It's more, uh, you know, leg room and the boot space is probably more important than the doors. OK, that's number one. Can we see what car we've got lined up for number two? Well, the second car, Michelle, is this, the Honda HRV. Now. I suppose that you could say this is the most practical of the three cars. Mm -hmm. um, this is a practically a brand new car, it's about 12 grand, but you don't have to spend as much as on, on that if you like the HRV concept. Prices start at about £8,000. I mean, do you like the look of it first? Um, I'm not sure that I like the look of it. Obviously, it is the most practical for me because it has the four doors and obviously it's going to have a lot of boot space. It does, yeah. Um, but I'm not necessarily a practical person, so. Um, it doesn't look as much fun as the others. No, I know what you mean. Um, it's it's not bit, got that sort of sporty element to it. It's very no. much a sort of lifestyle 4x4. Four four, yeah, but... it's a little bit sort of, you know, 2.4 children, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but you could go off-road in it if you ever wanted to do. True. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you obviously don't. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Come and have a look at the third car. And car number three, Michelle, is this, the latest Mini. Now, I think BMW have done a great job with this new Mini. This is the Cooper version, so it's a bit more performance, a bit sportier than the standard Mini one. It's the most expensive, this at the moment, 13 grand for this particular car, mm -hmm. but Minis are cheaper than that. You'd certainly find one for about 10 grand. Do you like it, first of all? Uh, first impressions, yeah, it's great. It looks really good fun. Um, and it actually looks quite spacious inside as well. Would you ever consider a Mini before? Never. No, no not at all. I'm dying to drive it. Um, no, it's, it's obviously quite small on the outside. It's yeah. not something I would consider at all. It's a lot of fun and it's sort of got a, a bit of a, you know, that sort of different element to it when you're out on the road. A lot of people sort of think, well, wow, there's the oh, latest Mini going past. Definitely. I think you'd certainly get noticed in it. <laughs> now, you're saying you've got to get your kids in, in the back of this thing and your friends as well. So you brought your friend Lorraine along today to, uh, to have a drive as well. So we need to go out in this. Lovely. Jump in. Let's go. Well, Michelle, this is the Mini Cooper, so it's the sporty version of the Mini, so it's got a bit more brake horsepower, a bit more power than the standard Mini. Yeah. What do you think of it now that you've got a chance to drive it? Um, it feels lovely, actually. Does it? It feels really you know, firm on the road. Um, I love all the dials and everything. They're I think it's, it's gr the interior is fantastic, isn't it? What about in the back there, Lorraine? How are you? It's a little tight. Is it? Um, I'd say probably a man would find it quite difficult in the back. Yeah, I I'm, know what you mean. I'm fairly short and my legs are okay, but it's quite tight to get your feet underneath the, the seat in front of you. So, I mean, with this particular Mini being practically brand new, it's only done 1,600 miles, I mean, do you think you would find a little bit extra money if you decided on this at the end of the day to spend it? Um, to be honest, probably not. It's probably the most impractical out of the three for me. 
if it was just for me, it's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, but with the children, because of the lack of space, um, I, I, you know, it's, it is impractical, really. Yeah. And now here's Chris with more about the Mini Cooper. Whenever I see a Mini Cooper, I always think, oh, isn't it cute? You, you just want to go up and give it a big cuddle. It's like having your own baby. But is a used one worth all that attention? This is a 1.6 Mini Cooper, 0 to 16 11 seconds, 115 brake horsepower, and a maximum speed of 115 miles an hour. Now, it looks funky from the outside, but what's it like on the inside? Standard on one of these, you get electric windows, electric mirrors, ABS, cornering brake control, electronic brake distribution, four airbags, remote locking, and a mobiliser, and a smile. It still has that feel of the original with this central speedo, plus really cool touches like these cool aircraft style switches down here. Room in the front is plentiful, but if you hop in the back, there ain't much knee room. But with split rear seating positioning, it does give you a feel of a more practical use for a small car. This car is set for cult status. We've all seen the Italian job and we can watch it over and over again. And maybe thanks to those people at BMW, you may see this car in the future in the German job. Al Wiedersehen. Right, there we are, that's car number one, the Mini Cooper. Michelle and Lorraine, clamber out. What about getting in and out of the back of there? It's not easy, difficult. is it? The seats are a little bit difficult, not ideal. But overall, what do we think about it? I loved it, it was beautiful to drive. Um, I love the look of it, I love the interior, I love the dials. Um, no, it was really good fun. And in the back, it's quite roomy for a small car, isn't it? Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. I was quite surprised when I got in the back how much space there was. Now, this is over your budget at the moment, so yeah. would you maybe think about a Mini 1 to save a couple of grand or so? Uh, definitely, yeah. At the moment, um, it's, def it's definitely an option. OK. It's certainly not something I would have considered, but it is an option. That's car number one. We'll drive the Honda HRV next. Mm -hmm. But before that, we need to find out what's going on in the surgery. Here's the car doctor. Today we've got a bit of a problem with the Fiat Cinquecento and it's been a bit of a cheeky monkey in that the rear washer isn't working and then we've had a route around to the bonnet near the washer pump and I've got a face full of water and I've actually found a pipe that's disconnected and split. Basically it's bad design and you can see that the pipe down here has come apart and it's actually split as well. So what I'm going to do is simply trim the end of it off with some sharp pliers like so and then hopefully reconnect two parts that have come apart, pop that back into place like that and then hopefully with that just pulled slightly so it's rerouted we should then get the rear washer working again and it shouldn't be a problem. Thanks Simon, there'll be more from the car doctor next week here on News Car Heaven but on this week's programme we're looking to find a new car for Michelle. She's already driven the Mini Cooper and now it's the turn of the Honda HRV. She didn't like the looks at first, does she like it any better out on the road? Let's see. <laughs> Michelle, when we chatted originally, you didn't like the look of this HRV at all, did you? Not from the outside. Has no. it grown on you any further? It has. Um, I like the interior. Um, obviously, I have a Honda. My, my old car's a Honda, um, so I can associate with that. And I like yeah. all the electrics that are to hand. I love the fact that it's higher up, so I've got a lot better visibility, which is also quite important. It is. I mean, obviously, it is a four x four. This this car. Um, but it's not the sort of thing that you could go through a muddy field in because you, <laughs> you wouldn't get out the other end. So what's it like in the back then, Lorraine? Is it comfortable back there? It sure is, and yeah. there's a, a lot more space in the back as well. Bags so legroom, plenty of legroom, definitely. Very comfortable. One thing we have spotted, though, is that there's no third seatbelt in the back. No, there's room for somebody in the middle. There is, isn't there? Very strange that they haven't put a third seatbelt. So mm. again, it's, it's another four-seater like the Mini. It's well within my budget. Um, you know, it's very practical. It's 
it's the sort of car I should be buying. You should be buying, <laughs> whether you will is another matter. Yeah. Well, here's Chris now with more information about the Honda HRV. If you're looking at the Honda HRV as an off-roader, well, don't. It doesn't fare too well up against the more conventional 4x4s, and this is proven in the fact that this is only a two-wheel drive. But as a conventional means of transport, it can cope with the odd rough track. This is a 1.6 litre. It'll give you 0 to 60 in 10.8 seconds, 32 miles to the gallon, and a maximum speed of 106 miles an hour. When you get behind the wheel of a Honda HRV, it rides and handles rather like a small hatch than an off-roader. But what comes as standard? Well, you get ABS brakes, you get air conditioning, electric windows and alloys, and there are four reasonably sized adult seats and a decent sized boot. So to sum up, this car has funky styling matched by refined road manners, but very limited off-road capability. Well, there we are, that's car number two. It's the Honda HRV. So, Michelle and Lorraine, what do we think? Didn't like the looks at first. Now that you've driven it, have you changed your mind at all? Um, obviously, it wasn't as much fun to drive as the Mini. It was nice to drive. Obviously, having that slightly high visibility was great. As we were saying before, it's the sensible option, this, isn't it? It is the sensible option. Obviously, it has a lot more space in it than the other one. Um... You don't want to be sensible, though, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> what about in the back? Bags of room. The back was fantastic, and obviously you've got the extra door on the back as well, so it's a lot easier to get in and out of. And those reclining seats as well? Yeah. Nice great idea, fun. nice touch. <laughs> I think it's not a bad price for this car. You could certainly find one well within your £10,000 budget, so mm -hmm. we're sort of okay-ish with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, it's fine so far. All right, you'll get a chance to give us your views on the Renault Megane Coupe very soon here on News Car Heaven, and that's after the break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes' time. Hello and welcome back to part two of Used Car Heaven. On this week's programme, we're looking to find a new car for Michelle. She's already driven the Mini Cooper and the Honda HRV, and along with her friend Lorraine, will be going out in the Renault Megane Coupe very soon. Also coming up in part two, Brad will have more insider tips at the trading post. But before that, Chris has an alternative car for Michelle. This is the Peugeot 206 CC, but don't switch off. It's not the 1.6 version, it's the two litre version. This will do 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds. It will provide rapid performance. One of the main features of this car is the total closure electric roof, which has been styled on the now infamous Mercedes SLK. It takes 24 seconds to get from hardtop to convertible. And once the roof is down, it's time to have fun with your 137 brake horsepower. Once you're in the Peugeot 206 CC, you can tell everything's been designed for comfort. Everything is big. Big buttons for central locking, big buttons for hazard, the radio has big buttons and it also comes with a CD player. Extras on this car, there's plenty. Standard on this car are electric windows, electric mirrors, ABS, fantastic leather bucket seats and a chrome finish on your gear knob, pedals and dials. But there's no room in the back, so this car really is just for you and a friend. This car has been finished off really nicely. It doesn't feel special to drive, but when you're in it, you can tell that you're in a little bit of a head turner. Thanks, Chris. Well, that's the alternative car that we've set up for you this week, the Peugeot 206cc, which I think you know something about, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. I have one myself. And have you enjoyed it? I've absolutely loved it. OK. You would recommend it? Definitely. Would it be a perfect car for Michelle, though? Probably a little bit tight on space in the bit back. too small in the back. But very fun and very sporty. OK. Well, we need to drive the Renault Megane Coupe. This is good value for money. Nine grand. It's a cheap car. Let's go for a drive.
Now, Michelle, when we were in the Honda HRV, you were saying that that's kind of the, the sort of sensible image. Car. That's right. Yeah. How would you sort of describe this Megane Coupe then? Um, obviously, you know, from the outside, it is a lovely looking car. Um, I think the only the main downside again is. It's um, quite small in the back. It has yeah. quite a bit of boot space, which is great, but it is quite um, small in the two back seats. Again, it only has two back seat belts. It does. And what about legs room back there, Lorraine? It's actually the smallest of the three. Is it really? Is it? I was quite surprised. Um, the Mini Cooper seems to have more space than this one. And you think and it'd be I the would expect way it to be the way around? Yeah. Definitely. But this, um, it looks nice and it feels nice to drive. Do you, you like the look of it? Oh, cars? I do. I like it and I love the interior. I think yeah. it's very, um, you know, all the dials are really clear and obviously it's got all the electrics. Air conditioning isn't one of the most important factors to me anyway. It doesn't worry you too much. Not too much. Very, very economical though. This will do 40 to the gallon, so it's pretty good on that and it's a low insurance group again. Yeah. That group important. 6, group 7 for this, which is not bad. I mean, you could always move up to the 1.6 or even the 2 litre model in this. Yeah. Megane Coupe range, which will obviously give you better performance, mm -hmm. and you'll get more kit on it as well. Yeah, I mean it is. It's a lovely car. Again, if it was just me driving it, it um, it's a really nice car to drive. Um, the biggest problem is is the space, and it's very small on space in the back. Well, let's get some more information about the Renault Megane. Here's Chris. This is the Renault Megane 1.4i 16-valve coupe. It's the most basic in the range, but it still gives you good performance. 0 to 60 is in 11.4 seconds, and cost new is £11,930. Now, recently, it's just been given some TLC, which means you no longer get that squishy handling, average build, or poor engine. This is a very capable, very safe, small car. Whenever I see a Megane Coupe, I often wonder, does it have as much space as a Focus or a Golf? Well, the answer is yes. It still has this curvy dash with controls, and it's very economical. This is a 95 brake horsepower. It will deliver 43.5 miles to the gallon and give you a top speed of 116 miles an hour. Standard on these cars are passenger and driver's airbag, anti-lock brakes and electric windows. The spec on these cars has always been very good, but since the revamp, it's got even better. So my advice is when you go out and look for a Renault Coupe, look for one of the newer models. Right, that's car number three, it's the Renault Megane Coupe. And it's not the easiest car to get in and out, is it Lorraine? No, very difficult. Very difficult. Smallest but one of the three. Smallest one of the three, which is surprising, isn't it? I mean, it's got a reasonable boot, but rear sp space for passengers isn't great, is it? No, not at all, not, not much legroom at all. What about to drive, Michelle? It was, it was very nice to drive. Um, not as much fun as the Mini. Um, but I think, that, again, the main downfall is, is the space. It yeah. is very small in the back. Does this car have the overall spark for you that would rush, make you want to rush out and buy it? It is good value for money, but no, I don't think so. Mm. Well, we're going to get your final verdict very soon. Don't tell me just what you're going to put number one yet, but I think I know. Don't tell me yet. Before that, we need to get some more insider tips from Brad at the Trading Post. This is the A-Class Mercedes, known to a lot of people as a baby Mercedes. Very useful, practical little car. Great design on this vehicle as well, with the engine located underneath the dash here. So for a Fiesta-sized vehicle, you get an awful lot of space. Models introduced into the UK in 1998. Engine sizes ranging from 1.4, which have a list price starting around about £15,000, up to the top of the, uh, top of the range, 1.7. The build quality is not superb, but it is good, good enough. The residual values on this vehicle are not that particularly good. A couple of years old, you could pick up with very low mileage for around about £8,000, £9,000. All in all, a good size utility vehicle. Lots of room in the car. In my opinion, a bit of an odd shape, but still a good seller. And all importantly, the Mercedes badge on the front.
Thanks, Brad. There'll be more insider tips on the Trading Post next week here on News Car Heaven. But on this week's programme, it's decision time for Michelle, who spent the day with us driving three very nice cars. I hope you agree. I have. Um, we like to do it in reverse order. So give us your three, two, one. What are you putting third choice? Uh, my third choice has to be the Renault. I'm no big fan of these cars, but you thought it was all right, didn't you? It was pleasant enough to drive. It just didn't excite me. It was it was very small in the back, and um, it was nothing special, really. But value for money-wise, you can't beat it, can you? I mean, mm. nine grand's a cheap car for a nearly new, nearly new car. As yeah, well. it was. It was good value, definitely. Number two, Honda HRV. Yeah, probably the most practical out of the three, but. It's not what you're looking for it at the wasn't. moment. It wasn't. It was just quite boring. I didn't like the look of it. Very spacious inside. Do you like being up high? That I high do. It was, the visibility was good. Um, but I didn't enjoy driving it as much as the others. Bit of roll when you go around yeah, corners. You're definitely. always going to get on these sort of cars. Yeah. Number two, not bad value for money again. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly find them a lot cheaper than yep. 11, 12,000 pounds. And number one, well, where's the surprise? Yeah, the Mini. You I liked this straight off, didn't you? I loved it. I loved the look of it. I loved the interior. Um, it was absolutely brilliant to drive. It really handled well. And it had a lot of space in the back as well for the children. The boot was quite small. That was the biggest downfall. But, um, you know, lots of space yeah. and it was just great fun. It's very different as well, isn't it? I mean, yep. you were saying before, all the, all the mums turn up at school in 4x4s four and right. MPVs. Nobody yeah. has a Mini No, Cooper. they don't. They don't. It's out of your price range at the moment. Yeah. A bit expensive. So you might think about a Mini 1, maybe. Possibly. Around about 10 grand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks, Michelle. I think you've made a good choice there. Thanks for joining us today. Thank That's it for this week's Used Car Heaven. Join us again at the same time next week.